Thank you. Okay, hi everyone. As Steve said, my name's Katie, and I work for Engineers Without Borders. UK. Sorry, Eve, forgot that bit at the end. Um, so, as everyone else here on the lineup tonight, in what appears to be Engineers Anonymous, I am also an engineer. Whoa, well, shock horror. A mechanical engineer, so I'm, I'm right there with you. Um, <laughs> when I used to tell people that I wanted to become an engineer, I used to get a slightly um, confused, perhaps slightly concerned response. It went something along the lines of, Engineering? Really? Katie, are you sure? I mean, you're A, a woman, B, you're blonde, and C, you're from Essex. <laughs> For those of you not familiar with what it means to be an Essex girl, <clears throat> I've got a couple of Essex girl jokes for you, just to, you know, let you know and illustrate the type of expectations that we have to live up to. <clears throat> so here goes. And, sorry Pip's dad, wherever you are. <laughs> <laughs> Number one. What's the similarity between an Essex girl and a tortoise? Once they're on their back, they're fucked. <laughs> Joke number two. What's the similarity between an Essex girl and a condom? They're either in your wallet or on your dick. Oh. I have to say that's about the only Essex girl joke I could find that encourages safe sex, so it's a bit of a joke. <laughs> and finally, my personal favourite, because it really raises the bar in terms of expectations. How do you make an Essex girl's eyes sparkle? Shine a torch in her ear. <laughs> It took you a few of you a couple of minutes there, didn't it? <laughs> oh, <laughs> brain cells, right? Yeah. Um, so anyway, <clears throat> for someone like me, uh, telling people that I wanted to become an engineer is not something that was, you know, expected. So I often had to explain myself. So I'd normally start with a story about how I grew up on a diet of David Attenborough on the telly, <laughs> inspired by the world around me, you know, generally loving animals, this beautiful planet that we live on. And one day, you know, inspired by the film, the 1960s film, Swiss Family Robinson, by the fact that I would move to a desert island, build a fantastic tree house, and be surrounded by ostrich, zebra, and of course the obligatory comical pirates. <laughs> For those of you that haven't seen the Swiss Family Robinson, I'd highly recommend it. It's a bit of a family favourite at Christmas for us. Uh, it's a fairly simple plot. It's about a Swiss family that get deserted, uh, uh, marooned on a desert island in Papua, Papua New Guinea. It's fairly uncomplicated. The actor John Mills plays a character called Father. <laughs> <laughs> Dorothy McGuire, can you guess, plays Mother. <clears throat> And at some point in the film, uh, the family single-handedly defeat an entire ship of very angry pirates with homemade coconut bombs. <laughs> so anyway, back to me. That's enough of Hollywood. Um, so, as you can tell, I'm a bit of a closet tree hugger. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, that was kind of brought about by the fact that my parents, in their ultimate wisdom, brought my sister and I up in the middle of a field. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm quite an ordinary person despite being an engineer. Um, it was an ordinary sized house, not some massive mansion. Uh, it just happened to be in the middle of nowhere. So on the odd occasion that we ventured into civilization, <coughs> we'd be confronted with this. Colchester High Street. <laughs> Flocks of people living, working, playing, generally eating, chewing gum, and leaving shit around everywhere. <coughs> Not exactly your most inspiring scene from planet Earth, hey Dave? <laughs> I mean, it's not quite so inspiring watching Joe Bloggs trying to catch a bird in the Wimpy on a Saturday afternoon, is it? You can just imagine the conversation around the next David Attenborough series <clears throat> in the role of producer. Hey Dave! So what's next on your list? You've done two toad slots. You've done Jesus Christ lizards. You've also done the screaming hairy armadillo. I mean, what else can be on your bucket list? Warning, amazing impression about to come up. <laughs> oh yeah, David. <laughs> well, I... <laughs> it's more, don't worry. I told you it was good. <laughs> well, I think I'd like to go to Clacton on Sea <laughs> to observe the fish and chip shop vultures the arcade monkey and the winter swimming floater. 
<laughs> I don't know about you, but it's not quite doing it for me. <laughs> so as you can tell, my interactions with the human world kind of disappointed me somewhat. Um, kind of bothered me. Uh, in fact, bothered me so much that I was worried that this beautiful world that we inhabited, you know, that Dave and I cherished so much, <laughs> that we were destroying it and there was no alternative. Luckily, before falling into the depths of, of despair, I saw a wind turbine. <laughs> I know! Amazing! At that moment, the penny dropped and I knew that if I became an engineer, in the words of Michael Jackson, and I'm going to go for this. <laughs> I could save the world, make it a better place for you and for me and the entire human race. All right. I'm really going to need a drink after this. <laughs> So, um, yeah, wow, people generally say, Katie, what a lovely story, that's so inspiring. I, I didn't know that, that engineers could do this, could save the world. Can you tell my kids? I'm sure they'd want to be an engineer. In reality and, and in truth, that's, that's only half the story because obviously being a straight-up girl from Essex, the real reason I was attracted into engineering is because there are an awful lot of men. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, if you're really lucky... You'll find about 20 men to every woman in engineering. How can you fail to find a husband and have a lot of fun along the way with that kind of ratio going on? <laughs> Especially, as I thought before I entered the engineering community, when they were going to look like this. <laughs> All right. Just going to leave it up there for a while. I think there's a few people in the audience, the high-pitched ones. <laughs> so, just enjoying that. <laughs> And just notice the time, so probably should move on. But <laughs> I've got copies backstage, so. <laughs> so, off I skipped <laughs> to join the engineering community. And what did I find? Well, there are a lot of men and not that many women. But that's not the saddest thing. Um, unfortunately for me, that whole world changing, life saving type stuff just doesn't really seem to excite engineers that much. You know, they're more excited about the fact that they can legitimately use phrases like shaft and lubricant and, as Pip mentioned earlier, the eternally funny flange. <laughs> Even better is once we've got our degrees in Master of Engineering, we can put letters after our name that spell out menge. <laughs> the fact that engineers save millions of lives by bringing access to clean water, enable economic development through electricity generation, and allow me to send numerous pictures of hot men with radiators to my friends via WhatsApp 24-7 uh, just never really comes up, doesn't come into the picture. <clears throat> and I'd just like to ponder on that for a moment, you know, this awesome power that engineers have to influence our everyday. When I think about this, I, I often like to think about the, the engineer that has the job of deciding where to put drain covers on the street. I don't know about you, but I'm sure you're aware it's really bad luck to walk over three drains in a row. Like, really bad luck. So I often imagine this engineer, a bit like the Bond villain, sat in his big swivel chair, stroking his white furry cat, and generally chuckling to himself as he decides where to put the drain covers. <laughs> hmm, I think I'll put one by the pedestrian crossing. <laughs> I'll put two in front of Tesco's Extra. <laughs> and then I'll really screw with their minds and put three outside the wimpy. <laughs> I imagine he does this so that when he's in the wimpy on a Saturday trying to impress the birds, he can pull out his magic wand. Nobody thought of that one, did they? <laughs> he can pull out his magic wand and shout, stupefy, and impress all of the, bird, uh, all of the birds in the wimpy by um, all of the pedestrians in the street just spontaneously breaking out into a flamenco as they try to avoid the three-train booby trap. <laughs> So we don't seem to talk about this much, the power of engineers to influence our lives, you know, even with drain covers. And for us, it's causing a real problem. We've got a real shortage of people choosing to become engineers in the UK. Uh, mostly this is due to a lack of inspiration. <clears throat> in fact, it's so bad, you know, our obsession with technology without context, that the best marketing uh, teams can do to make us look exciting is, is put a hard hat on our heads. 
I mean, what do they expect people are going to say? Oh, look, a big shiny yellow hat! That looks like so much fun! Sign me up right now! Even better is when they start talking about really fast cars. I mean, don't they know that 80% of the global population is going to live in cities by 2050 with average speeds of 20 miles per hour? I'm not sure I need a faster car for that. I don't really want my Uber travelling at close to the speed of sound when I'm trying to eat my kebab after the Christmas party. <laughs> so in short, that's why I do what I do now. Trying to inspire the next generation of engineers by explicitly talking about the social impact of engineering. I just want to take a moment to thank everybody here for coming along tonight, because all of the sales, as uh, was pointed out earlier, go towards Engineers That Borders UK and help us do our, quite frankly, amazing work. Big up to the colleagues at the back. <laughs> I'm also obliged to say, because one of them is my head of fundraising, that if you'd like to give us more, that's totally fine. <laughs> if for nothing else, then to help us inspire people from Essex that they can be more than a bimbo on TOWIE. Just representing. <laughs> they can become an engineer and bring the magic into everybody's every day. Yes, as engineers, our, our magic is a, sl a little bit slower than Harry Potter's. It's going to take us about 20, 20 years to magic HS2 out of the ground, for example. <laughs> but for me, that makes it no less special. So, if you have a glass, I'd like to say, here's to the next generation of engineers to bring magic into our, every into our everyday. Here's to Harry Potter, Menge. <laughs>